In this video, you're going to learn three things you should be doing as a worship leader while your pastor is preaching. Coming up. Wait a second. Why am I using this camera still when I've got this camera? Hi guys. Let's get into it. Hey, Spencer here from leadingworshipwell.com, your daily dose of practical worship leading tips. If you want to find those tips, head over to Instagram or Facebook at leadingworshipwell, where I'm posting new worship leading tips every single day. But you're here on YouTube, so go ahead, hit subscribe down below, and let's get into it because today we're talking about three things that you should be doing while your pastor is preaching. And listen, this has been me before, right? You're so focused on your worship set and you're like, I've got three or four songs at the beginning, and I'm going to focus on that. And then you, you get through those three or four songs, and maybe it's amazing. And you're like, yes, my part is done. I'm good. Now I just get to sit back and relax. And so your pastor comes up to preach, and what do you do? You just kind of sit there and take it in, and that's okay. That's a good starting place. You should be paying attention. I hope you're at least paying attention. But there's so much more that we can be doing as worship leaders that we need to focus on whenever our pastor is preaching. We need to not just view ourselves as worship leaders whenever we're on stage and playing music. We need to see ourselves as worship leaders throughout the entire service. And your pastor's message is such an important time for you to do a few things, which we're going to get into today. But before we get into those things, I want to hear from you. I want to hear what do you usually do when your pastor is preaching? Like, are you just sitting out there, like, chilling? Like, what's up, guys? Are you talking to somebody in the back? Do you use it as a bathroom break? Do you not even sit in the room whenever your pastor is preaching? Do you go to the green room and you aren't even part of the service? Whatever it is. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm going to show you what I think is right in a second. But I want to hear from you. What do you usually do whenever your pastor is preaching? Let me know in the comments below as you're scrolling down there. Leave a like on this video, and I'll talk to you in a second. Thanks so much for leaving your answer down below. Now, let's get into these three things that you need to be doing as a worship leader while your pastor is preaching. The first thing you need to be doing whenever your pastor is preaching is this. You need to be taking notes, like have a notebook open and be writing things down. And listen, maybe you're like me and you're not really a note taker. I've never really been a note taker. And I'm giving myself this advice too, because I still don't do this all the time. But I think that this is so helpful is to take notes because it does a few things. First of all, it shows your pastor that you're paying attention. Like it's a tangible sign that you are paying attention because if you're like sitting there staring at your phone the whole time, obviously you're not paying attention. If you're looking around and you seem gener generally uninterested whenever your pastor is preaching, you're not paying attention. And if he sees that, like we're not doing it just so he sees that you're paying attention, but that's encouraging whenever you see that people are engaged. And so we want to encourage our pastors. One of the ways you can show that is to be like, hey, I believe that this message that you're bringing is important enough that I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to take notes. Like, I believe that this is important. So I'm going to write down your key points. At least you don't have to do anything crazy, but show your pastor that you're paying attention because you should be paying attention in the first place. So just to get that out of the way, that's a, that's a base level thing. But on top of that, we're worship leaders, not just when we're on stage, we're also worship leaders when we go to sit in the congregation and we know that worship is more than music, but one of the ways that you can teach your church that is to actually show that the preaching section is worship too. Like, hey, here's this worship leader. He doesn't just worship whenever he's up on stage, but he worships whenever somebody's preaching, or she doesn't just worship whenever she's up on stage, but she worships through paying attention and learning and growing in God's word. So that's the second thing to do. You can lead worship in your church whenever you're not even up on stage. You can just do it by setting the example in sitting in your congregation. And then finally, number three, the reason that you want to take notes is that it helps you remember. And it's so important to remember, not just for our own personal use, but for whenever we get back up on stage after that, after our 
pastor has finished the sermon and we want to use some of the language that he used whenever he preached. So whenever you're sitting in the congregation, sit there, take notes, and we're going to expand on this in a second, but listen for ideas that you might be able to use whenever you get back up on stage. So write them down because that's going to help you. Like it's scientifically proven that when you write things down, instead of just listening and hearing and be like, okay, I'm going to remember that for later. No, actually write it down. And in the process of writing it down, it'll help you remember it better, which leads into our next point. The second thing you should do whenever your pastor is preaching is, okay, now I've taken my notes, I'm listening to the pastor, and now I can use the language that he's using, I can use the words that they're using, the, the themes to craft speaking transitions and prayers. All right, you've got, you probably have at least one more song coming out of the message, right? And so in that song, if you wanna lead a moment and you wanna lead a speaking transition, first of all, you should probably plan that in advance. I've got a video about that right here about speaking transitions, actually I did a whole series on it. A lot of it had to deal with uh, doing these things in advance and being prepared properly before the service, but during the service, you might get some new insight that maybe your pastor didn't send to you before he actually preached. So you wanna listen for those things and be mindful of them and then think, how can I use these things that I've written down and I've remembered, how can I use that in my speaking transitions and in my prayers? I think there's something powerful whenever you show cohesion between the worship leader and the pastor and you see that they're saying the same thing and you can show that by just using the same language. If your pastor uses a specific phrase bring that phrase back up. Say like our pastor said, uh, God's in control, but you have a role. That's something from Kerry Newhoff. That was just the first thing that popped into my head. But if you use that phrase, God's in control, but you have a role in your, uh, in your speaking transition in that final song coming out of the message, then that's going to reinforce that idea in your congregation because they're going to hear it in a new context you're gonna lead them in a response to it and they hear a different voice saying it. So there's even more opportunity to remember these main points that your pastor brought up. So obviously you need to know what those phrases are. So take notes first, but then go a step further and look at the notes on your page and say, okay, what can I use from here that's going to reinforce what my pastor taught on? Because we want cohesive worship services where we're talking about the same thing. We don't want our pastor to come up and he's talking about uh, evangelism and then we're over here talking about something completely different and we're talking about God's faithfulness. Like none of those things are inherently bad ideas, but whenever we can focus our efforts together and work with our pastor and not against our pastor, then we have a more focused worship service and people aren't scattered and like thinking about a million different things, but they can focus on the one thing where God is leading your church that specific Sunday. Finally, the third thing you should be doing whenever your pastor is preaching is thinking of different parts of songs that you can sing. And I say this because I think that this is like one of the most uh, accessible ways to get into spontaneous worship. Spontaneous worship is doing something that you hadn't had planned, right? Or at least that people perceive that you hadn't had planned. I kind of talk about uh, preparing in advance in this video right here for your spontaneous worship, which might sound a little out of the ordinary, but go check that video out. But you can legitimately have like an unplanned moment and in your service by sitting there listening to what your pastor is preaching about and thinking, what songs do I know? What songs do, does my worship team know that tie in to what my pastor is saying? And you should be planning these things out in advance. Once again, you should always be planning these things out in advance, but you know there's some times where your pastor says something that you didn't know that he was gonna say and all of a sudden this song pops in your head and it's okay to play those, to get back up on stage. Maybe it's just a chorus or a bridge or something and you put it 
at the beginning or you tag it onto the end of the song that you originally had planned. Like, that's okay. Those are such powerful moments when you say, guys, I didn't expect to sing this, but God put this song before me and I feel like we need to sing this truth together and believe it together. If you can do that by paying attention to what your pastor is saying, making the connections, like that is, that is ideal spontaneous worship. Spontaneous isn't always just making up words on the spot in worship. It can just be doing something that you didn't have, have planned and maybe it's already a song that already exists. So listen for connections to what your pastor is preaching on and then sing those songs. Be confident in that and make those connections. So do those things whenever your pastor is preaching. Take notes. Get a notebook just like this. Sit there. Write down what your pastor is preaching about. That's gonna show you, show him that you respect his teaching. That's gonna show your congregation that worship is more than just singing. You're not just there for the music part, you're there for the whole worship service. Everything in the service is worship. And then it's also gonna help you remember what your pastor is preaching on so that you can use the same language and words and thoughts and ideas that they used as you close the service out. So that's the first thing. Take notes. After that, you need to craft your speaking transitions using the things that you wrote down. That's why we wrote them down. We didn't just write them down for the sake of writing them down. We wrote them down so that we can use those ideas to craft our speaking transitions and our prayers. So actually put it into action then. And then finally, listen to what your pastor is preaching about and think what songs make sense. Is there something that we should be singing that maybe I didn't have planned before coming out of this message so that people can respond even better than what I already had planned? The spirit moves in that way sometimes. So thanks so much for joining me today. Before you go, I've got a free training for you that helps you improve your worship leading. It's called Five Tips to Instantly Improve Your Worship Leading. If you didn't check it out yet, it's a free audio training where I walk you through five things that you can do that will instantly improve your worship leading. You just have to know them and make the commitment to do them. So there's a link to that in the description below. Other than that, thanks so much for joining me today. Until I see you in the next video, keep leading worship well.